uh, for anyone who's forgotten and for Dorothy. We are going to start by learning about an artist of focus. We'll talk about her work today, look at some of that work and talk about it. And uh, then I will talk about the project that we're going to create today. And uh, I'll talk about the materials that you will need. You'll have a couple minutes to gather that stuff up and put it all together. And then we'll go to work and have some fun. Any questions about the format? Today? Oh. Sorry. What supplies will we need, Liz? Well, I'm going to get to that later, but okay, I'll jump the gun. You really only need um, an old, few old magazines, scissors, glue stick. You might need a pencil, and that's it. Okay. Are you not, who asked me that question? Are you not on my email list? This is Dina. Yes, I haven't read all my email today. <laughs> You're forgiven. Thank you. Um, and Dorothy, if you would like to be on my email list, I send a, an email out on Saturday or Sunday, uh, letting everyone know the synopsis of the class and the materials that you might need. And also, Dorothy, the library gives out a grab and go bag of free art supplies every Monday before the class. But if you want to give me your email in the chat box, uh, I will add you to my email list. Liz? Jane. Uh, thanks. So uh, it's a monthly art bag these days, just so, just mentioning. But oh. I, called the, I called the library yesterday to inquire about what they used to do with their old magazines for those who are not a accumulating magazines. And I'm waiting for a call back. I'll let you know what they say because we might be able to um, to use those magazines if they're still giving them up, you know, that's, after a year or whatever. That's a brilliant idea. And I can always, never occur to me, but I could leave things on my front stoop for Hoboken residents because I have a lot of stuff. There you go. So I will add my address to my next email so that those of you who may not have certain supplies uh, that I things that I have a vast supply of, I can leave some of that in a bag on my front stoop. I will alert you to the fact that I have done that for um, other things in the past and the bag sometimes disappears and takes a walk, but we can try that and see if that works. And if you don't have magazines, um, you can use newspaper pictures, any kind of old photographs will work. I have tons and tons of old family photos that are basically emulsifying and getting destroyed. So yeah. that kind of thing will work for you as well. Scan them. You can scan them too, so they don't get ruined. All right, just give me a moment, everyone, please. I have an email address that I need to write down before I forget to do this. Excellent. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Okay, our artist for today is a woman named Ellen Gallagher. She is an American artist. Oh, and I forgot to mention, welcome to March. March is Women's History Month. It is a national uh, recognition month of the fabulous contributions that women have made to the history of this unique country. And there are women in every field of endeavor who are quite uh, renowned for their accomplishments and including the visual arts. So we are going to look at a different artist, female artist, every week in the month of March. And our first artist is Ellen Gallagher. She is American. She was born on December 16th, 1965 in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, she's been in many, many shows. She's in permanent collections of many major museums. She works in paint, 
works on paper, film, and video. Many of her artworks refer to issues of race. She is of mixed race heritage. Her father is from a very interesting, or his heritage is from a very interesting place on the planet Earth called Cap Verde. Cap Verde is on the west coast of Africa, off the coast of Senegal. It is an independent nation once colonized by Portugal. And the fascinating thing I think about Cap Verde is there are more emigrants from Cap Verde than any other country on earth. Because it is such a tiny nation and there's very little employment in Cap Verde, the Cap Verdeans have, have emigrated to every country probably on the planet. So are you saying she was born there? No, nor was her father. Her father is Cap Verdean heritage oh. born in the United States of America. Her mother is an Irish Catholic. She was born in Providence, Rhode Island. She is American of mixed race heritage. People from Cap Verde are African Portuguese mixture. And if anyone has to the world the best singer. It's Zaria oh. Evoria. Exactly. Is amazing. Yeah. She is. Thank you for mentioning. I was gonna say that, Nomi. <laughs> yes, Cesar Voria has the most beautiful voice maybe on earth. And maybe later, if I remember, I'll, I'll try and look and see if I have some of her recordings. Okay, she, Gallagher is renowned for being an abstract painter and a multimedia artist. She's probably most famous for her narrative pieces. Um, and she was heavily influenced by the artist Agnes Martin, but also the poet Gertrude Stein. She likes repetitive imagery and repetitive words, like Stein liked to repeat words in her poetry. And she, in her early work, she used images that she found in advertising, particularly in African-American publications like Ebony and Sepia and Old World. They're all African-American magazines. I don't know if any of you saw her, she had a small solo show at the Whitney several years ago filled with these pieces and they were just, I mean, I spent hours. It, it was in the small gallery space right to the left of the bank of elevators on the first floor of the Whitney. So it's a, it's a small gallery and I spent hours absorbed by her work. So she creates these grids and Agnes Martin was an artist who worked in the grid format as well. And within the grids, she uses the print media from the magazines as well as techniques from printing that she uses herself. So etching, lithography, silk screen that she incorporates uh, into or incorporates with the images that she's cut out from uh, the magazines. Okay, there's a question in the chat box. Cesar Avoria is the singer's name. I'm going to share it with everyone. And she is from Cap Verde. She had, and her voice is unusual to say the least, but hauntingly beautiful. And Cap Verde is the island that Ellen Gallagher's father came from. So these grids can be huge. She can have multiple smaller images that she puts together in these very large installations, grid-like installations. Uh, for art school, she, she went first to Oberlin College. Uh, she didn't make it through to graduate from Oberlin. She left after the first year and became a carpenter's apprentice. How cool is that? She traveled all the way to, I believe it was the state of Washington or Oregon. 
one of those West Coast state, and she became a fisher person, a fisher folk. And she lived and worked on fishing boats for quite a while. And she fell in love with the sea. Quite a lot of her later work, the work that she's doing now, in fact, has to do with the mythology she's creating about sea creatures that um, she's invented. They are the offspring of Africans who were either thrown overboard from slave ships or who jumped overboard and committed slavery, uh, committed suicide during the slave passage um, in desperation. And then they had offspring with underwater creatures and she has done many, many artworks based on the, the offspring the, the incredible spirits and creatures that she's created from the creatures from these relationships between the slaves and the sea creatures. She's also been influenced by Kiki Smith, one of my favorite artists. Uh, we have talked about her. Those of you who are my veteran students, we've talked about her in the past as well. One of her first exhibits took place at the Dark Room, which is in Boston, where Gallagher uh, did go back and finish art school at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts. And um, there she became influenced by Smith, Anne Hamilton, and Leila Ali, and also an artist named Susan Denker. And themes, as I said before, related to race are often evident in Gallagher's work. Sometimes she uses pictographs, symbols, codes, and repetitions. What she calls sambo lips and bug eyes, references to the black minstrel shows are often scattered throughout Gallagher's work. Additionally, Gallagher would use these symbols in her collage pieces. And she's been inspired by lined yellow paper that school children use. She's also created an image of a peg leg character that sometimes populates her pages. So let's take a look at her work. Oh, I do want to talk about one uh, type of thing that she's been doing, and this is, I find this so fascinating, and it's more prevalent in her newer work. She creates what she calls scrimshaw, where she carves, literally carves images into the surface of thick sheets of watercolor paper, and then drawing with ink, watercolor, and pencils, she works the color and lines into the etchings that she carves out and into the papers. And that's how she creates these sea creatures of the mythical undersea world that she calls Drexia, which is populated by the progeny of slaves who've drowned. There's even a musical duo by this name from Detroit. She says that the way that these drawings are made is my version of scrimshaw, the carving into bone that sailors did when they were out whaling. I imagine them in this overwhelming, scary expanse of sea where this kind of cutting would give a focus, a sense of being in control of something. So cool. So she's exhibited the Whitney, as I've mentioned, also the Venice Biennale. And the artist Chuck Close created a 2009 tapestry portrait of Gallagher. How interesting is that? She's represented by the Gagosian Gallery and in New York and Hauser and Worth Gallery in London. She's based in the United States in New York City and also in Rotterdam in the Netherlands where she lives with her partner. All right, ready to look at her work? 
I'm guessing yes. Yes, please. Here we go. So I do have to open it first, so hang on. On picture. Here we go. She also uses plasticine in her work. So she will put, plasti plasticine is a form of Play-Doh. She'll put the 3D plasticine on top of these images that she makes. This is really difficult to look at. Unfortunately, the digital world blurs everything to a point where it's almost impossible to see. I apologize. As always, I invite you on your own time to Google her, Ellen Gallagher. I forgot to put her name in the chat box. I will do that for you as well. So you can see that the images are for the most part cut from magazine advertising. She does cut out certain features. In this one, she's cut out all the eyes, which gives it a very kind of spooky quality. They are all African-American faces. She did a whole series in which she emphasized African-American hair and hairstyles. Hair is quite important in the African-American culture and community. And so she was making statements about culture and appearance. Let's look at another picture. Sorry, Liz, it's, it was hard to see. Is it like cartoon? No, no, it's, it's print media from magazines and she also prints herself so she does etching she does silk screen she does lithography and she cuts and pastes and collages all that together and then on top of that she overlays the modeling clay or the plasticine the yellow colors that you saw was modeling clay. It was difficult to see. I'm glad you asked. Let's try another picture. Um, you know, I have a picture here, unfortunately, that is not by her. So what I'm going to do, I hope this works. I'm actually going to Google her. And find some more images. Yeah. Let's see if I can get something better. Oh, here's a larger one. I'll open this up, try sharing this one. Yeah, I think this is going to be easier for everyone to see. Keep our fingers crossed. Everyone see this? Yes? Yes. Okay, good. 
So it's easier to see now. This one is also where she's using what she calls her scrimshaw technique, where she has carved out of the heavyweight paper layers upon layers of these oval shapes. She's cut out photos from print material from magazines. I don't see any evidence of printing of her own printing in this image. Although in the background, it almost looks like she's done something that's called collagraph printing, where a piece of soft paper uh, is run through a printing press with an object on top of it so that an impression of the object is pressed into the paper. Do you see back here, do you see where my cursor is at the top? And there's this really lovely texture here. So this piece probably is part of a much larger installation. It's probably a small piece amongst many multiple images, all of them different. Any thoughts on this aesthetically, the composition? Anyone have any comments that they'd like to make? It looks like a peacock. <laughs> it does look like a peacock. Want to do this or no? It looks like a 1950s ad. Yeah, the ads, she likes to use old magazines. I've been watching WandaVision on Disney and it starts out like a 50s sitcom. It just kind of reminded me of it. Okay, I have heard of that show. I Go love check it. it out, it's amazing. I love the show. Are those eyes original? Because the cornea looks very small, especially for the person on the left side. Yes, the cornea I looks again. Very Again, she's very focused on the eyes and she has, I think, manipulated the image of the eye. Either she's cut it out completely and then redrawn it. Mm -hmm. I would have to be very close to the actual piece, but it does not look very realistic, does it? Right. No. So I think she has changed or manipulated mm -hmm. that part of the face. To me, it looks like the good old hair dryers. Yes. Of the era. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yes. It does. And, and the use of the very light pastel colors, too, has that 1950s nostalgic feeling to it as well. And the woman is very, very pretty. There's something so pretty, creepy, but pretty at the same time about this image for me. I, I do want to say compositionally, uh, since no one's brought it up yet, the enormous size of these shapes, how it fills up, how this image fills up the, almost the entire interior space of this image, but then how she leaves the white space that she leaves becomes very powerful. This negative space here between the heads I think it's quite wonderful. And then whatever this thing is here, just popping up, really balances. If, if this, excuse me, if this little gray rectangle down here was missing, I think the whole picture would be weak. Hmm. It would lose its, its <laughs> compositional power. It, All right, let's look it rounds the image somehow. Yes, and it balances. Yep. The, Something about the verticality of the shape, the verticality of the, the thrust of the necks. It kind of reminds like that, um, that little shape on the right is, it looks like it's in the foreground as opposed to the, you know, it has, it ha and it has more dimension than the background images. 
it, it does look like it's in the foreground and that's all because of this white line here. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. The, this image looks like a tree to me, the, you know, uh -huh. one out. This could be the canopy of the oh, tree at the tree. top. Yep, not hair at all, but a tree top. Why not? <laughs> she, there is another image that I loved where she does what she does in the foreground where she has a hand. So you have one huge face where these, it's the, the head has these flames and then you have the white around it. And then you just, from the white, you just have this hand going through and it's amazing. Wow. But it's the same thought process, I think. Awesome. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have that one available. Suzanne, why don't you talk about, you were lucky enough to go to her show at the Tate? No, I, 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 di I didn't. I just was looking at her um, ahead of time and I was looking at the images and they fascinated me. And so I started reading up about- oh, okay. I thought you had- No, I was just interested in her process. So we're probably not going to be able to see the individual pieces, but I wanted to show you the mammoth quality of her work. So you've seen the smaller and you've seen the incredible detail that she incorporates into each small piece. Magnify that times, you know, a hundred. And you get a sense of the enormity the power of her, her installations. So that's hurting my eyes. We're not gonna look at that any longer. <laughs> I wanna look at, share with you one of her newer works. So you can see how she's evolved and then we're gonna go to work on our own. We're gonna have fun. Oh, what am I doing? So very different. This one incorporates watercolor, printmaking. This is one of her sea creatures from her mythological play. I just conceptually, her work to me is so very deep. Her mythological place called Drexia. And, and I'm not seeing the scrimshaw type things that she talked about is not evident in this image, but I really do think these shapes over here have been carved out and inked in as if they had been, I don't know if you folks have ever seen Scrimshaw, but Scrimshaw is made by, the whalers would take whalebone and they would carve into the whalebone and then rub ink into the lines that they etched and scratched into the whalebone. And that's what she's trying to accomplish on paper. It's fascinating to me the way all of her life experience really feeds into her art. Born in Providence, Massachusetts, which is a whaling town, doesn't finish art school, goes and becomes a fisher person, fisherwoman, comes back to art school in Boston, Mass, another whaling community, incorporates this art scrimshaw done by whalers a lot of her artwork is about slavery and this mythological place, Drexia, where these creatures live that are the offspring of slaves who've, who've died during the long passage from Africa to America. So our life experiences are what mold what we 
are inspired to create. We cannot escape our personalities when we make our art. Our personality always comes out in what we create. And that's what makes it art. Any thoughts on this piece? So different from the other types of things we've been looking at. I think it has an incredible sense of texture. The texture just jumps at you. It is so powerful in terms of the, you just want to reach out and touch it <laughs> like a piece of sculpture almost. Okay. I love the shapes on the right, me looking at on the right hand side, the, those squares and things that the, just the, the color and the, the shapes and somehow in relationship to everything else, it just, and, and, and this, this, uh, whatever this is, the, the lighter green and yellow mark over what she's done. It, it, it's, uh, I don't know what to say about it, just that it's, it's very moving and striking. That, that mark makes it look like it recedes back. Uh -huh. You're talking I about the light? The, the green and yellow mark. Oh, okay. Mm. To go back diagonally back mm. gives mm. a perspective, actually. Mm -hmm. I think it allows for a lot more imagination. I'm almost seeing it as a seascape, as if I'm looking down at mm -hmm. islands and a jetty on the right and a boat passing mm -hmm. through. So I'm enjoying that. It's taking me away. <laughs> it, and, and I love the colors uh, on the right hand, those squares, and then on the bottom, the same quality of color. And then on the left up there, there's this pulling it together with that incredible green and I don't know, it gives balance to it to me. Yeah. It's, and then the background is amazing. <laughs> I don't know what, yeah. For me, it's genius composition because, I mean, this looks like it shouldn't fit in the picture at all. Mm -hmm. And this looks like it shouldn't fit in the picture at all. But mm -hmm. because she brings the colors around in this U shape, they bind together. Mm -hmm. And because she has this bright white, but then she repeats it. There's a unity and a balance. Someone used the perfect word. There's a balance. And then this, whatever this seaweedy thing is, pulls the whole thing together. It, it, the background is so striking. Um, yeah. Just, it's beautiful in and of itself. And it's fascinating. You've all been talking about it from different perspectives, as if it were, first of all, an aerial view, which never even occurred to me, or underwater, or we could be looking on the surface, or we could be far away, removed, and looking at something way off on the horizon. That's pretty cool, too. Love it. All right. We've been talking a lot. I feel like we're ready to begin. Okay. So I have someone, no, I did answer that, great. All right, so today, this is probably not gonna fill you with confidence, what I'm about to say. <laughs> but, you know, truth in advertising, let's be transparent. One of my new favorite words that I'm learning to hate. It's right up there with authentic. But we're gonna do collage today. And collage is one of my harder things to teach. It's right up there, those of you who've been with me a long time, it's right up there with trying to teach abstraction. Collage is difficult for me to teach because there's so much going on in collage. We have line, we have shape, we have form, we have texture, but we also have content. 
And all of those things are visually competing in the left side of your brain. And somehow you have to let all that go and access your more visual cortex, the right side of your brain, to make it work visually and compositionally and pull together as one whole piece. So I'm gonna make suggestions as we go. But before I start talking about what you're gonna make, here are the things that you will need. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to gather up what you want. If you have everything already and you feel confident about just jumping right in, you can start. Otherwise, wait the three minutes until I start showing you what we're going to do. Okay, magazine photos. If you get the Sunday New York Times, this week's magazine section was chock-a-block with photos. Suggestion. Focus on faces. I'm going to focus on faces today because I was inspired by looking at Gallagher's work to do that. And she is our artist of focus, so. Um, <clears throat> faces could be a starting point for you. And I wanna put her name in the chat box for everyone to see, because I don't think I ever did that. Ellen Gallagher. If you don't have magazines, uh, old catalogs, junk mail is a great thing to use. If you have a recycling bag somewhere in your house, go get it. Just drag the whole thing to wherever you're working. Newspaper photographs are great to use. You will probably need a pencil, an eraser, a glue stick, and you might want a straight edge or ruler. And you need white paper. If you're lucky enough to have a heavyweight drawing paper or perhaps tag board, a heavier weight cardboard, or even watercolor paper, some kind of paper with a bit of tooth to it, it might be easier for you to do your collage work on a heavier base. Once you have all your supplies, I'm going to share the screen again. Two students in this class started ahead of time and did started to do this assignment already, and they've given me permission to share their work. So I'm going to show you their work as examples of the types of things you can do. And then I'm going to show you what I've started doing. A couple more minutes to get, oh, you need scissors, duh. And did I say glue stick? And you might want to have either crayons or pastels or graphite crayon or markers to fill in empty spaces in your collage, background areas, that, that might work for you too. Or if you are lucky enough to have paints and you work, want to do a multimedia approach, you can drag them into your workspace as well. I'm just going to grab a drink, quick drink. Okay. I'm going to share the screen.
So this is a piece done by one of the students in this class, Suzanne. I know she's not finished with this yet, but this is a multimedia collage, and this is a direction that you can go in. She did not focus on faces, but she's got all different kinds of print material. She's also got different kinds of paper. I believe, I'm not sure, this netting down here looks to me like what you get your vegetables in. I'm not sure, Suzanne, where did you get your netting from? Um, lemons or something. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's a produce bag, why not? She's even got some keys. Can I ask how she like glued that on or got it to stick? Um, it, I haven't glued it on yet. I'm in the process of doing that now. This was like the draft. Okay. How big is it? Um, it's, let's see, about, I, about this big. I, I, what I don't, is this big? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Liz, can you see me or not? Like a page? Um, no, no, it's my, well, I, I don't know if we can actually see you while I'm sharing the image. We, okay, we I, can't. Got a, I got a ruler. It's about um, 22 inches long mm -hmm. and, and um, 19 and a half uh, wide. Big. Big. Bigger. Very nice. Beautiful. Suzanne, is the, the upper section um, with the uh, black background, did you, did you paint that or it's make like that? Butterfly. It's, it's, that's, those are butterfly wing. I mean, from a photograph of a butterfly. Uh -huh. The red is netting, you know, from fruit. And then there's a face, the face, and then there's the, um, the earring is a, you know, like a gold little, you know, piece that I glue, mm -hmm. put a glue on. And then the red, and the back is tissue paper. The red is tissue paper. Um, and everything else is just collage. Well, they're actual keys here, no? Yeah, and they're the keys, sorry. They're the, the keys that are like the gold piece or the, you know. And and I don't is, know this, is this face down here three-dimensional? Which face? Where where the keys are? At the very bottom, upside down. Oh, okay, so. At, There's an upside down face. Yeah, that's a man. At the very bottom. Yeah, that's. Magnet. No, no, it's a collage because it's a it's a collage that head and the hands went together, and then I cut out oh, okay a to give it dimension. I cut out a black um, rectangle to put around the face to give it, it. dimensionality. Got it. Now, uh, I'm putting, can I? Are you finished, Suzanne? Yeah. I have one more question. Did you pick the type? first or did you start? No, I, I, I was, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking, do I start with images or a concept? So I was playing with that and uh -huh. I didn't have a lot of magazines. I had very few. I decided I better collect the images that, that meant, did something to me, that moved me in some way. And then once I had the images, I also was looking at type and then I saw change of heart. And so that gave me my theme, change of heart. So you have the woman on top and the man at the bottom of the dress. So it's, that's uh -huh. the, that becomes the theme. That's interesting how you decided that. And it's great to hear your process, Suzanne, because this is, and I'm glad you asked that question. I think it was Karen, because this is the difficult part about collage. Where do you start? And I would have thought the butterflies might have been your starting point. The actually, my starting point, believe it or not, was the dress. It's from the Smithsonian and the dress gripped me. It was Martha Washington's dress. Uh -huh. That add, adds another layer of irony to all this because Martha Washington owned slaves. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, and did you know in African-American iconography, the butterfly 
is the soul of the departed or the the wow. escape yeah or the escaped the free yeah i didn't know that so that's wonderful but the butterflies for me are what help pull your composition together see the repetition of the forms of the butterflies really are what draw the eye throughout the composition of this piece. The other organizing factor that she has is color, the reds and the colors in the orange, red, yellow family are repeated and they mirror throughout the composition. And that's what helps to pull the disparate parts of the collage together. So these are the types of things that you need to think about. And looking at the image today, Suzanne, I like the way you have these two bits of blue here, turquoise here. I might recommend that maybe up here, do you see where my cursor is? I'll put a little blue something, yeah. A little bit of blue up in this far corner. Yep. Might even add a bit more yeah. cohesion it to your composition. Absolutely. And the, those two blue things were actually supposed to be hands, like change and heart are supposed to be arms coming out oh. of the dress. Mm -hmm. And then the watch, is which actually says something. I don't know if you can see it when it's um, blown up, but the watch has something glued on it that says this or that, ours. Yeah, or that. <laughs> and um, that was supposed to be you know, part of the arm. And then I was thinking of the blue perhaps as hands going into those other hands that you see kind of below the dress. All right. Well, thank you, Suzanne. I think that's gonna help us in our journey today. All right, we're gonna quickly look at another. This person went in a completely different direction. This is Helen's piece that she shared with me yesterday. She does not seem to be here today, unfortunately. She sometimes comes later. Maybe we can talk to her about it then. So Helen cut out and glued down many different women's faces, and there's a power to this image. I like the way she varied the size of the faces. I like the way the faces are looking off in different directions, and I kind of like the way everything's tilted. It really has a nice motion and feel to the composition, composition in her piece. And they're all happy. I love that. All right, so you can see that there are two completely different ways. And there are many different avenues that you can go in when you do collage. I recommend that you start with the theme. Your theme should be simple. It could be an idea. It could be an idea like love or peace or harmony. It could be a family color. It could be red, blue family of colors. It could be forms or shapes like you might want to do faces like i'm going to focus on or you could start with shapes or a grid composition because that will help you to control the space in which you work so what i'm going to do today i'm going to start with a grid I have a grid that's four by four. Mine is rather large. I'm going to show it to you in a second. And Susan's here. I didn't even know. Hi, Susan. 
and I started cutting out faces and I'm going to put a different face in each square, each rectangle in my grid and I'm going to work from there. I'm going to have to work on my tabletop. Collage. I will put it up on the easel at various points in my progress so you can see what I'm doing. Any questions so far? No? Okay. Recommendations. If you are gluing paper to paper, common ordinary school glue stick is the best. If you are doing three dimensional pieces like Suzanne was doing, you want something like Elmer's liquid glue to glue those 3D things securely to your paper. Or if you have a hot glue gun, that would work well too. You can also stitch things to your paper if you really wanna make sure things are attached permanently. Stitching or stapling would work too. Just make sure you don't staple it to your tabletop. That would be a disaster. All right, any questions? You don't always have to use an entire image. If you think back to Ellen Gallagher's work, she cut out the eyes. You can cut up your theme shapes into different parts and use them separately. And when you are looking at the things you're looking at, this is where it gets tricky. You want to try and start thinking about them as shapes and colors and textures, not as things. So when you relate them to each other, you're not relating them to each other because the faces work well together. You're relating them to each other because perhaps the colors work well together or the texture of the hair works well together. I hope that makes sense to everyone. So even if your theme is a concept, once you have the theme, you want to play this double-edged sword of releasing your mind from the concept or the idea and focusing more on the visual at the same time as you're remembering the overall concept and trying to emphasize it. That's what makes collage so incredibly difficult. All right, so I'm going to start working on mine. Oh, let me see if I can find some music by Cesar Aboria to put on. And her native language is Portuguese because she is from Cabo Verde. I think she does have a few songs in English, but I'm not sure if I can find them. I will, will try. You probably cannot see well, but I've already created my grid. There are 16 by 16, or four by four, there are 16 boxes in my grid. Four by four, 16 boxes. And I'm going to work on a different image in each box. Unfortunately, I can't show you what I'm doing while working. Here's another suggestion. I would recommend that you not glue down until you're absolutely positive you like where the shapes are. So you want to cut out a lot of stuff and move it around on the paper. Make decisions before you glue. And if you don't finish during this class, that's quite all right. Oh, 
we have somebody new coming. Maria, if you can hear me, welcome. We have just started making collage. Collage is the process of cutting paper and gluing down. We have looked at the work by a woman named Ellen Gallagher, who did a lot of collages about faces. Her work dealt with frequently dealt with racism, issues of racism. She is of mixed race heritage, an American artist. So welcome. If you have any questions, you can just... Thank you. Ask. Have you done art before? Yes. Oh, yes. Like, what I recommend, um, no, we're, no. At, Maria, we're an hour into the class, so I recommend uh, you look, do you have access to Google? I would Google Ellen Gallagher. Okay. I have put her name in the chat box. If you can open your chat box, you can see how to spell it. Look at some of her images for inspiration. Okay. And if you have any old magazines available to you. And a suggestion, I started with a four by four grid. Six empty boxes that I'm starting to work with. Usually I work up on my easel so everyone can see what I'm doing, but it's kind of difficult to work on an easel while doing collage. So I'm gonna hold up my work at various stages of development. Right now I'm looking to see if I can find Music by a woman named Cesar Evoria, who is a singer from Cap Verde, an island off the west coast of Africa, where Ellen Gallagher's father, his parents are from. Maybe I misspelled her name because she's not coming up. Liz, what's her last name again? I thought it was spelled E V O R I A. Uh, o R A, and the first name is Cesaria. Right, because Cesar is a man's name, Cesar. Uh, yeah. e ah, here we are, yes, that's what I did wrong. Cap Verdean singer. Listen. Ooh, Cesaria Avoria live in Paris. Complete concert. Yeah. To me. Yeah. 
this out here. And boy, I'm gonna type it again. For everyone. If I did misspell. Okay, I just typed her name in the box in the chat box. Try and think about how you're going to unite the parts of your collage. Is it going to be shape that's going to unify the parts? Is it going to be color? Perhaps it's going to be texture if you use three dimensional things. I'm using the grid format. It's already given, giving me a sense of control in my work. And ironically, also a feeling of freedom because it's given me parameters in which I know I have to work, but within those parameters, I can play and experiment.
I don't know if you can hear Cesar, Cesaria, Evora. The sound quality is not great. It's just on my phone. But it's beautiful. probably going to start gluing down way earlier than I recommend you should, just so I can show you the process. time you spend playing around with the images you've chosen, I predict the stronger your composition will be. It gives you a chance to think and plan. Deixa-me ouvir, 
see, I'm actually cutting some of my faces apart, using them in discombobulated ways. Now there are more shapes than parts of a face. Kind of like now I'm playing chess. I'm moving the parts of my grid around to see where they look most effective. Removing and replacing. I'm going to start going down so that you can see the steps that I'm taking. Lower the music a little.
I didn't think I was going to go horizontal, but I am. And I'm far from done, but I am enjoying the grid format, like I said. Don't forget to step back from your work every once in a while to see what kind of progress you're making. It will help you to determine your composition and where you want to place things. And it'll give you a new vantage point. Maybe even give you new ideas and new direction. We'll work for about 15 more minutes and then we'll stop so I can share with you about next week's program, next week's class, and we'll have time to share. Everybody doing great? Not seeing any questions in the chat box.
I don't know if it helps. Margo, I see you're looking. So, I haven't gotten very far yet, but here's where I'm at. You can see I've used the grid. Faces are my theme, although I've got some other shapes as well. Now I'm trying to work in color to be my connecting force in the composition. piece of hair from the second one down that connects the second to the first here yeah that hit that yeah, this is this is a lock of hair here beautiful i love that part have fun yeah that's fabulous and i like how it then echoes in the necklace there's the necklace over there that kind of huh? yep yep this, this is this young man's neck Ah, uh, yeah. but the shape is the shape. Yep. Yeah. I might try and emphasize this somehow. To connect to the hair. That's really cool. But by now, you're probably all realizing how tricky collage is. You have so many different choices to make, so many different things to juggle while you work. But it's those challenges that I find so exciting about collage. As always, if you don't finish your piece during this class, that's okay. You can always take a photograph of your work and send me a JPEG. I'm always happy to give advice. And suggestions.
And cutting up the drawing I did last week. Stop. Actually, two more minutes.
All right. So we've come to time in our class. And those of you who are looking at what I'm making, you can see I'm way far from being finished. There's a lot more I want to do within each grid, the background. Probably I'm going to do some drawing and coloring in to fill behind my shapes and some of my rectangles I haven't even filled yet. So more to come. The process is so fun and I hope you've all been enjoying yourself. Our artist, now is the time in the class when I'm going to tell you about our artist for next week what I'm hoping we're going to accomplish and the supplies that you might need. And then if people want to share, it's your opportunity to share and we will give advice and suggestions for those of you who want it. So our artist for next week is Marlene Dumas or Dumas. I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name. She is a South African artist. I don't know if that's cheating. She is a woman, so it's not cheating. Uh, I first saw her work, I think it was at MoMA. And I was just blown away. She is a portrait artist. Her portraits are incredibly emotional, evocative, and moving. And we are going to revisit portraiture ourselves next week. I invite you to find a photograph. You might want to do a family member for this one. Find a photo a large full face photograph. If you don't want to do a family member, that's okay. You can use a magazine photo, but try and have it be an image of someone facing completely forward. And I forget what media I wanted us to use. Hold on a minute. We're just going to use pencil and paper for the next class. Um, more seasoned veteran students, if you want to work in color, uh, you might want to use colored pencil for this one. Dumas herself does not use a lot of color, but she does use red. Very um what's the best word to use she uses red very strategically in her portraits she uses red with very dramatic effect all right any questions about next week if not let the sharing begin who wants to go first never know how to do this and do it equitably. Just think of sharing as the time when you can get ideas and help. You're having too much fun working. That's cool too. We don't have to share. I will I'll be go. happy to, Liz. I'll be happy to because I feel so stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Taylin, I think. No, it's Nomi. It's Nomi. Okay. Yeah. I thought I said Taylin. Yeah, I said it, but I I'll wait because I need a little help too. Okay. So Nomi. Uh, I, I'm thinking there about are you. There you are. Um, Emerge motif. 
No, I think, oh, there you are. Okay, good. Yeah, Nomi, here's my suggestion. You have some wonderful imagery. Perhaps if you color your background, yeah. you need you need some something to pull all these parts together. And it could just be the background needs to be a solid color. I love the negative empty white shapes that you have so much too. Okay. But I'm not sure what color the background should be. That's gonna be up to you. I see a touch of, of green. Maybe it should be in the green family. I was thinking of cutting letters. Um, I'll cut them in green then. That's a possibility. That big would be thing, big emerge. Okay. Or fly or shorter. Here, here's um, some thoughts about words. And this is for everyone, Nomi, not just you. Words carry so much meaning as well as visual impact. So think about that when you're trying to incorporate them into your composition. I don't know if that helps, but And I'm glad you're leaving the words till the end. I think that that will make it easier for you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so thank you for sharing. It was wonderful, wonderful beginning. Um, I'll share. Well, Taylene is next. Soon as I, can. I, I had to take a picture because I have not um, nailed anything down yet. Um, and I did put words into mine. It says time, home, uh, and please go. And I can't remember the other one, but it was about travel. So the problem I'm having is the white space right there. Oops. And Taylin, I'm having trouble finding you. Oh, here you are. Okay, good. Wow. So I a suggestion to you too. And I would not go dark or heavy. We okay. need color. We need color in these white spaces. Right. I love that you're in the blue green family. I would lightly in either watercolor or crayon. I would maybe fill in the white. Okay. Something and in the what, blue green. Still staying in the same blue green. That's yeah. what I was having in this day. Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. I love this. And I actually liked um, Ellen Gallagher's, like, she had like boxes, and I think it was the first or the second picture you showed where it was like little boxes of blue and then green. Like, you could see that there was texture back and forth. Yes. So I was, yeah. yep, and she did. She used those grid boxes. That's so you she think that would look nice if I do blue greens in that. Yes. Yep. Okay. All, All right. Very good. Thank Excellent. Thank Thanks for sharing. And I think Heather, you wanted to go. Yep. Great, Colleen. Oh, Heather. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. <gasps> Brilliant. Very gorgeous. I, I just use fabric and paper and tissue paper. And just, I was not feeling the different shapes, so I wanted to do one big. Yeah, no, this is great. I need to do the background, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I, a, I would echo the skin tones in the background. I was and thinking, maybe, is that, is that you? Color? Are you going to watercolor or maybe more collage? Do well, have I haven't used watercolor. I was actually maybe thinking of just taking this paper and coloring it in a color or using kind of a, a gold. Oh, that's nice. The gold? I like the gold. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'll do. 
Try a little, don't glue it down. Try, see how it looks, and then glue it down. Okay. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. Anybody who's next? Hi, um, it's Robin. Um, this is, um, uh, can you see it? I don't know. Who, who is it, Robin? This is Robin. Uh, this was uh, the beginning. Uh, I painted it on an old painting that I didn't like. I, I used that as the Why background. Not? Yeah. And then I worked on getting faces because you, that's what, that's can what. You, can you shift it somehow, Robin? It's, there's a lot of glare. Yeah. Wait. Tilt it, tilt it towards your screen. Yeah. Okay. And the, the color in the big head doesn't really come through. It's more like a lavender pink. I see that. I like it. And that I, this this is just the background and getting like I this this oh you can see the space down here was interesting to me in this one in juxtaposition. You can't really see this, but there's a big Buddha female type Buddha with a Asian woman standing next to her, and then this is an Asian woman and then. Anyway, and this is a city scene and another person. I, I, I would be painting now. This is just the background for. Oh, okay. And, I, feel, and I feel it needs more layering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the areas where the shapes are obliterated and it's more abstract mm -hmm. are working better than the spaces where you can see what the things are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So, for example, where the cityscape is visible, I would start layering on top of that and make yes. it look more abstract. But yes. you're, headed, you're headed in a very good direction. Excellent. Thank you. I'm interested to see where it goes, but definitely want to start painting on Yay. it. Yay. It's the Thank journey. You. Ah, we have Here's three minutes left. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you. Susan? No. Yes, Susan? Me? Hi. Esty, Esty, you want to go? Esty. Yeah, 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 but it's... <coughs> I started to do something, you know, a la Ellen, but I'm not... It's just the beginning, you know, with the... Uh, oh, uh, oh, with the cutouts. Yeah, the cutouts. What? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you need lots more. I, lots more faces, lots more cutouts. Oh, yeah. this is headed headed to a really good place yeah i like this keep going oh it's really charming, <laughs> charming. It is. is this a compliment yeah, yeah. Charming? <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah i'll continue we'll see what happens here please do all right i think i'm not sure but i think susan wants to share um I'm not really finished. Uh, it's hard to tell what's going on here. I'm. Oh, I like the dark background. Yeah, keep yeah. going. Keep yeah, going. yeah, going. yeah, yeah. It's uh, totally not finished yet. My well, you're, at the, you're at the fun stage where you're just playing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Keep going. Okay. You have one minute. Anybody else? Come on, go for it, kids. Maria, do you want to share? I joined very late. Sorry about that. Uh, but I started, I just Google uh, Ellen Gallagher, uh, Gallagher Morphia and I took some pictures oh. of Cesaria Evora. Fantastic. And yes. cover, her, cover her eyes. So, because her voice is more like the voice of love. I touched one of her. Uh, it's all about love and uh, like she will like uh, see what's going on with Black Life Matter. So like just cover her eyes and uh, trying to, to do. Uh... Did you look at Ellen Gallagher's work? Yes. Yeah, because it really, really feels like you've been inspired by Gallagher. This is great. Keep going. Thank you. I would, I would get more of Cesaria. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, just, I just me. had. Yeah, it's wonderful. Wonderful beginning. I'm so glad you're in our class. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh, this class was fun. 
So not everyone had time to share. Say, Jin, you've been so focused. I want to see you work so bad. This is so frustrating. I, I'm for still me. cutting my magazine. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um, please take photographs of your work. I'm going to put my email in the chat box again and send me the JPEGs. Liz, quick question. Yes. The grid. What are we supposed to do with the grid? You don't have to do the grid. I no. opted to do the grid because that's what Alan Gallagher did. Okay. So and it's a I like I like working within a grid because it gives me the control. It it gives me the parameters in which I'm forced to work. And it's it's interesting because it gives you control, but it also creates a sense of freedom because you know you've got the space in which to work, but you can do whatever you want within that space. So gotcha. I made a grid that was four by four and um, then just had fun with it. But you do not have to do the grid. I opted to do the grid in honor of Ellen Gallagher. Does that okay. make sense to everyone? Thank yeah. you, Liz. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks. It was great today. I hope you all enjoyed. Next week, Marlene Dumas, look her up. You're going to be blown away. <laughs>